For a while now, Cray has held the crown as the top AI upscaler, but that could be about to change. Scenario has just released their brand new AI upscaler, and I have to say it's pretty impressive, and possibly enough to even dethrone Magnifique. What's more, it's considerably more affordable, has a lot more that you can do with it, and even has a free tier letting you upscale up to between 10 and 15 images a month. Definitely a lot more than what Magnifique has to offer. So let's dive in and have a look at what this new upscaler can do and compare it with Magnifique. In case you didn't know, the way AI upscaling works is a little bit different from how upscaling has been done in the last few years. Traditionally, the way upscaling would work is if you needed to increase the size of an image, your tool, which up until recently would have most likely been Photoshop, would look at the pixels in your image and simply double what was there allowing you to increase the size of the image without losing much detail. However, if you were going from 1024 pixels to 2048 pixels, there was not really any way to bring back details, just to maintain what was already there. The way AI upscaling works is it increases the size of the image and then it uses AI to try and figure out what details should have been there. So to a certain extent, what AI is doing is taking some creative interpretation when upscaling the image to come in and fill out the details. Now, depending on the AI upscaler that you use, this can result in really good images or images that are completely different from what you started with. Some AI upscalers, such as Scenario, allow you to control the amount of variance that the upscaling takes, meaning that the final image will stick as closely as possible to the original image, potentially filling in less details, or let you be completely creative and in fact, reimagine the image as you're upscaling it, taking something from 2D to 3D, or changing the style completely as you upscale it. With that in mind, let's take a look at a few images and see how Scenario handles it. And just so we have a point of comparison, I've gone to the Magnific website and grabbed some of the examples that they show of their upscaler performing so that we can compare apples to apples. So for the first example, let's have a look at this illustration of a giant cat in a library. And it's kind of got this anime-esque look and feel. Underneath it, they actually show off some of the key elements that they're particularly proud of with this image. So if we have a look at the image overall, this is the unupscaled image. And when you upscale it and bring it over, we can see that the cat tone kind of changes slightly. And this little boy here, when we bring the comparison over, we can see that it goes from this disfigured face to the boy kind of looking down reading, his eyes kind of closed. Down over here on the right, we can see a little bit more detail brought into the books. Up here, up top, we can see some of the murals at the very top of the library are redrawn. And just overall, you get this quite significant increase in level of detail and sharpness. My favorite, if you pay attention closely, this little blurry part up here turns into a cat that's also reading. So let's see how Scenario compares. So if we jump over to Scenario and grab the same image, I'm not very sure what level of upscaling they have done here in Magnifique, they, whether they've done 4x, 2x, or 16x. In Scenario, I've just done between 2 and 4x, depending on the image. On, on this particular one, I've just 2x'd it. But if we look at the original image and bring this over, we can definitely see a significant increase in the level of sharpness, in the lines. We do get that slight tone change on the cat, but I actually feel like it's a little bit closer to the original image than in the underscaled version. The lines are sharper. If we look over here at the books, there's less noise, giving it more crispness. The cat down here is detailed as well. We don't actually get another cat up here. Instead, we get something else, maybe some unused equipment. The murals up here are also redrawn. And again, I think they're drawn a little bit more closely compared to what the image was. It's sharp, it's crisp. The chandelier looks absolutely fantastic. And of course, the little boy down here goes from this weird face to the eyes being drawn a little bit more appropriately. There's not quite uh, a mouth there. So if we look here at the Magnifique image, you do actually get the fully drawn uh, face even if their eyes are closed with a little bit more crisp detail. But scenario is not far off. Uh, however, I do have to admit the level of crispness is not there in the character. But besides that little point, I would say everything else is comparable. Now, one of the really cool things about Scenario is we can actually change the model that it uses for upscaling so that as you upscale it, the style changes completely. So this is what it looks like in different styles. 
This is a little bit more of a realistic painterly style. We can see that now the library's kind of got this ethereal glow to it. The cat is a little bit more painted. Our young boy here is a completely different style, but unfortunately, uh, we are seeing a little bit of artifacting going on here. Something that could probably be fixed with a couple of more iterations. Unfortunately, because they haven't put these on the Magnific website, I don't have anything to compare it with. Here's another iteration. The cat's looking much better. Uh, our boys turned into a little girl, but they're holding the book properly. Let's grab another one. I'm sticking with illustrated and game art ones first, and then we'll look at the photorealistic ones. So if we look at this one, this is kind of an isometric game art style. And again, the initial image is not too bad, but when we upscale it and bring this over, the colors are just more vibrant. The lines are sharper. Everything just feels a little bit crisper. There's more details drawn in. So how does it compare in scenario? And once again, just like in Magnifique, we do get a little bit more crispness in the image. The particular settings that I've got here uses the standard model uh, and I've told it to be very precise. So it actually tries to follow the image as closely as possible while upscaling. And we can see here that there's not a lot of change in terms of the image. There's not a lot of additional details added. Some of them are just redrawn slightly. But if we give the model a little bit more room to work with and actually use the cartoon model, we can see here that we start to get a lot more detail drawn in. The art styles change a little bit, giving it a little bit more vibrancy with that goes in line with the cartoon style which I think is really cool. Bringing in a ton of additional detail at color and vibrancy while tweaking the art style just a little bit. To keep it a little bit closer to home, uh, because we are looking at an isometric style, I tried the 3D rendered one and this brings it a lot closer to the original image while giving it some very interesting 3D tones. So we can see here now the tree and all these elements look very 3D while still maintaining the overall facade of the building. My favorite though is this one, which is also a 3D rendered one, but you can barely tell and once again, it just sticks phenomenally to the building. So what we've seen with Scenario is depending on the model that you use and the settings that you set, we can get a huge deal of variety in terms of how precise we are to the image versus how much creative freedom and detail goes into it. This one uses the standard model and this is probably the closest that comes to Magnifique. It keeps everything there, the details are there while upscaling. Now, so far we've seen two examples of uh, an illustration and a game art style image, which are the types of images that Scenario is built for. But how does it perform with photorealistic images? So here we've got this image of a old man, looks like an old man by the sea. And if we look at the original image, it's once again, kind of blurry. We've got quite a bit of noise. And if we bring over the Magnifique comparison, it pulls out an insane amount of detail. If we look here, the wrinkles are incredible. We can really see the level of detail in the skin, how it looks washed out by the sun, and even the individual fibers of the hair. And again, I don't know if this is because of a combination of the use of the model and how big they've gone in terms of their sizing. Now, if you try and use Scenario to get similar results, at first you might struggle. And this is what happened to me at first. However, with a little bit of tweaking and understanding the model, you can get very similar results. So if we look at the first attempt I made at upscaling this image, here we have our old man by the sea and running on the standard model at 4X with kind of a balanced approach. We're giving the model some creative freedom. It actually decided to de-age our old man. And if we bring it over here, he now looks significantly younger. We've lost a lot of detail. The skin is smoothed out and the beard kind of has a bit more of a painterly look rather than getting all of that crisp detail that we got in Magnifique. However, with a bit of tweaking and a few additional iterations, we got a little bit closer. This is what it looked like at 4X on the precise model, meaning it tries to follow the original image as close as possible. And we are a lot better, but we're still not getting that same level of detail that we got with Magnifique. The skin is still smoothed over. It doesn't have that sun blasted look. And once again, we don't have that feeling of, oh my God, I can see every single hair in his beard. It still feels kind of very smooth and painted over. And there's a reason for that. The reason for that is that when you're upscaling or enhancing as they like to call it, you need to head over here to advanced and make sure that you turn on override style embeddings. And what this does is scenario have a few presets kind of set up in their prompt when they upscale an image. 
Because this is a tool designed for illustration and game design, I'm guessing a lot of these presets are designed to push the model towards that kind of imagery, even on the photorealistic model. If you turn that off and put in your own embeddings, uh, in this case, I didn't have to do much. I just left it as a description, but using typical stable diffusion tokens tends to work very well for me. UHD, ultra high detailed, high detailed, 4K, 8K, etc., tends to give me better results when working with photorealistic images. So by making those small adjustments, this is what the final image ended up looking like. And if we come in here, this is only at 4x. Again, I'm pretty sure if I had done this at 16x, I would get an even greater level of detail. But this is the base image. And if we bring it over, we now have a lot more the feeling of wrinkles. We've got that texture in the skin and even the hair looks nice and detailed. The skin here just looks incredibly crisp and precise. Having said that, this is the first iteration of the scenario upscaler. I fully expect things to improve from here. So keep a close eye on it. And it is still significantly cheaper than Magnifique, which means you get a phenomenal upscaler for I think like half the price. And they have a free tier, which I couldn't even access with Magnifique. I, I had no way to test out these images for myself and see if the results are cherry picked by Magnifique. And to prove my point, I, I will show one more photorealistic image. Having said that, although I did say that the model does struggle with photorealistic images, it's specific to portraits. If we have a look at this image over here, this is again a photographic image in Magnifique landscape, landscape slash architecture image. And if we look here, what's happened with the Magnifique, we've got the before, which kind of has this Greek looking house. And if we bring this over, there's again that level of detail. Uh, if we look at the wall here, it's kind of gone from this plaster style to this brickish stone style. The flowers have bloomed here. Uh, it's again got that level of vibrancy uh, and crispness and so on. If we look at the scenario version, we again have a few options depending on the model that we chose. Working off of the precise model at 2x with photorealistic, the image is exactly the same, but we can see here in the finer details that there is a level of crispness and detail added in without making significant changes to the image. All right, we can see here the flowers are blurry to a little bit crisper. The moss up here goes from this blurry mess to these crisp images. And all in all, we maintain the general look and feel of the image without making any significant changes while improving the fidelity. If we give the model a little bit more freedom with the balance approach, we can see here that now it, it starts to change the colors and give a little bit more vibrancy detail to the image while again maintaining the general features. Uh, we could see here in Magnifique, it completely changed the plaster to this brick style, whereas here it kind of just whitens the building a little bit more, making it feel a little fresher and newer. If we give it the maximum degree of freedom, however, this is where we start to get results a little bit more similar. We can see here that the tree now has a phenomenal level of detail. Once again, goes from being blurry to getting all of this crisp detail. There's now more accenting in the house. It looks a little bit more worn out. We can see here that it's a bit dirty and broken down. The flowers are bloomed, but I do have to say it does maintain a better level of fidelity than Magnifique, at least for the building. Uh, over here in the distance, it seems to have brought the background incredibly close, much closer than what it was before. And finally, once again, we have a look at another photorealistic image. This is what I was referring to earlier. This is a portrait. We've got the girl here where the image is kind of blurry. We don't really see a lot of detailing in the face. And if we bring this over, Magnifique comes in and kind of adds in the texture of the face, the way the light kind of falls off. An incredible level of clarity here in the eyes. Unfortunately, despite my testing and even with removing the embeddings, I could not get that same degree of fidelity in scenario. If we look over here, this is about as close as I got. In fact, the skin looks even more smoothed out and this eye in the back, it looks a little glassy. The lips look like they're 3D generated. So I do definitely think that the scenario team does have a bit of work to do. But as I said, this is their first generation upscaler and considering that it's just come out and they're constantly working on it, I expect them to close the gap very quickly with Magnifique. So if you're not trying to create portrait images, it's a phenomenal model for everything else. It works just as well as Magnifique and should definitely be something that you consider if you're working with illustrated images. Uh, this is another one, one of my favorites. They've got this 
graphic style kind of futuristic motorbike, maybe something out of the Borderlands. And once again, we can see here with the precise model, it, it kind of goes from this not very crisp image with a bit of noise. If we upscale it even just 2x, it looks quite a bit sharper. The colors are a little bit crisper. Uh, and again, this is the precise model. If we give it a bit more freedom with the balance model, it gives it almost this chrome style look. And again, the output can be tweaked by giving it prompts if you want it to be a little bit more chrome, a little bit more illustrated, whatever information you want. But this is my favorite feature. I love playing with this and seeing what the model comes up with when upscaling and how it tweaks and adjusts images. Here's another iteration with a little bit more chrome, almost a photorealistic look and feel. This is with the 3D rendered model, which I actually think surprisingly gets it to feel and come really close to these illustrated styles. It's very cool. And here's another one. And then this is a creative 3D rendered one, which kind of skews a little bit more towards the realistic. And that's the Scenario Upscaler. What do you guys think? Will you guys be checking it out? If you do, please use the link in the description below. It really helps me out. And make sure that you sign up for our newsletter as everybody who signs up using my referral link and signs up for the newsletter will be entering a giveaway where we give out a few credits to help you get started with Scenario. So if you're interested, please make sure you try that out. I also invite you guys to come by our Discord drop whatever images that you create, ask any questions, and just chat with our phenomenal community. And finally, if you really want to support the channel, please check out the Patreon. It really helps me out. And all of you guys who support me help make this channel possible. I am trying my best to try and give you guys a additional exclusives and additional goodies, including a separate giveaway just for patrons for the scenario credits. I'm also temporary. I'm also giving lifetime access to anybody who signs up for our $6 tier but that will be going away very soon. So if you want to get access, sign up now. Thanks, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.